everybody, Johnny B. Good here, located right now in Vernon, California. Today is, once again, August 11th, Monday, 2014. Local time here is 6.22 p.m. I sat here for about close to 11 hours. I finally got my, uh, my 11 and 14 hours back finished my 10 hour break so it's actually pretty cool anyway I am on my way now to uh, well first things first we gotta get to Ontario and get us some fuel cash advance and somehow blue is screaming for blue is screaming for uh, coolant blue is very sensitive when it, the coolant is low even though it's not really low yeah somehow the sensor needs to be recalibrated recalibrated there you go so how many of you are uh, Robin Williams fan I heard the uh, sad news of his passing today. I really think that of all the work, of all the movies that Robin Williams did, I've got to say that Mrs. Doubtfire is probably the top of my list. What a sad way to go, committing suicide. Uh, not cool. Let's follow this guy over here. Right directly in front of us is um, Los Angeles. Tom, we are to take this 710 towards Pasadena. By the way, got bad news.
they sent out a fleet-wide message this afternoon. They well will now be implementing the video cams or uh, dash cams. I'm not sure if it's all the trucks or just the the trucks like me who was volunteered. <laughs> Yep, I was volunteered to it. Why do I say it's a bad news? Well, it's the kind that has dual cameras. Points out, points in. I don't know. I hope it's not a I hope it's not a distraction so much as I mean we all act weird in front of a camera right I get this conflicting messages that blue is low on fuel and yet it's still showing a quarter of a tank I don't know why that is I panicked early this morning because on Saturday, remember, I fueled in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Okay, I fueled in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. I got here in City of Industry 900 miles later. And I gotta swear that my fuel was still about at least more than less a little less than half and then early this morning I noticed that the fuel gauge was empty like what and see what happened was when I arrived in uh, when I arrived in city of industry I parked inside the facility so I know for a fact there's no hanky panky going there you know nothing nothing weird going on as far as anybody messing around with blue but last night when I delivered I was forced to park on the street my right side of the truck was the sidewalk and then on the left side was exposed to the cars passing by so I don't know whether I don't know whether if somebody stole some of the fuel or not but I'm thinking Santa Rosa is about 900 miles to city of industry. So 900 miles would consume about 180 miles, 180 gallons, right? So, and blue is only what? 125 gallon per tank. And you can only fill that like what 90% per tank I really don't know what's going on and then suddenly when I started driving to go get fuel 
then I noticed that the fuel gauge went back up to less than half and right now it's on a quarter of a tank but sometimes the warning the low fuel warning you know activates and buzzes God forbid I should run out of fuel before I get to Ontario Ontario is about 35 miles from here oh welcome to the California traffic is gonna end and yet they keep going hoping that I could make it at least to Kingman, Arizona before I shut it down. This is going to be a while. Traffic fines double in work in construction zone. Have you guys heard about this uh, restaurant, family owned restaurant in uh, North Carolina, I think it was. They were offering 15% for anyone that gives thanks or say grace when they eat their food. I mean, harmless enough, right? I mean, it's a good idea. 
if you the idea is if you're if you're mad enough to display your faith in public and give grace to the food you're about to receive you get 15% discount well guess what yep you're you got it right they being they're being sued <laughs> They're being sued by uh, the Religious Freedom Institute of some kind of that nature. They said it was discriminatory. I mean, really? Seriously? And if, of course, it's a small family-owned restaurant, and they're going up against this gigantic uh, atheist religion-free blah blah blah. So the restaurant folded, and they no longer offer the the discount. I mean, if you don't, if you don't like it, why not go take your business elsewhere? You know. I mean, why does uh, why do you have to sue them? I mean, really? So does that mean that I people can? Now, this is not my argument. I just heard this. The argument was, okay, then restaurants that give military discounts or any kinds of discount, I guess they can be sued by that too, right? I mean, I could, I can go to any establishment and say, you know what, you're giving discounts to this people or that people and it's not fair, I'm going to sue you. Oh yeah. I guess people can't. I don't know. What's next? They're they're gonna sue you for giving thanks and giving grace before you eat. I wonder when that's going to be illegal. If you didn't know, here in California, or especially here in Los Angeles, motorcycles can go split lanes. 
in uh, in traffic motorcycles here are allowed to go between uh, cars that's one good thing about California that law that I like but you can't do that on a gold wing <laughs> There's not enough room for a gold wing to go through between cars. And of course you can't go between cars if the traffic like this is moving. The traffic has, I think it has to be a complete stop. For motorcycles to do a split lane thing. bad news about California is they are you're required to wear a helmet let me get your opinion on the helmet uh, law clearly clearly the helmet law the helmet I mean I, I do believe in helmet don't get me wrong I really do in fact, I use it a lot. Sometimes I don't. But when it comes to helmet, it is your own health. Nobody else's. It's not like you're going to endanger anyone if you don't wear a helmet. You know, they say that uh, not wearing a seat belt can catapult you out of the car and your car can actually drive into somebody's car. With that argument, yeah, maybe, but you know what? Chances are if you, if you were to have that high impact uh, chances are you're already passed out and unconscious and uh, regardless if you're wearing a seatbelt or not uh, the car is going to keep on going plow on people or whatever but for this you know for the sake of argument yes let's say seatbelt can be add that little argument but when it comes to helmet don't you think we have the right to say what's, you know, if I want to wear a helmet or not? So the argument then is, well, we care about you, so we're, we're going to make you wear a helmet for your safety, for your good health. Well then, let's let's regulate how many hamburgers can you eat in a day or in a year. How many McDonald's Big Mac you can uh, you can eat, or what you should put in your body, or right? I mean, it, it's double standard. Uh, It's a double standard to say, well, I'm going to find you so you will be forced to wear your seatbelt or your helmet. And if I drank a gallon of whiskey, it's okay. Or smoke three packs of cigarette a day. Yeah. But you know, in the overall scheme of things, that's just the way the world works. That is the earthly law, the earthly nature of things. Well, 
we got 31 miles to uh, the TA. Welcome to the city of El Monte. Phoenix Drake, I know, I see the force, I see it. Forgive me, I don't get excited. <laughs> I suppose we'll uh, we'll catch you when we get to a little closer to the TA. Johnny, be good here. Have a good and godly day, everybody. Peace.